Episode 156, Memory Afresh. Sean gave her a sweet smile as he looked at her and replied, I know what the doctor instructed for the initial months, Sarah. Don't worry, I'm not going to do anything to risk your health or child's health at any cost. He gave her a small peck on her lips as he smiled and continued, Okay, we should sleep now. It is quite late. Sarah was touched by Sean's words as she beamed at him, as she hugged him to go to sleep. As she closed her eyes, she suddenly remembered, Oh no, I forgot to ask Sean where he took off to after leaving the office. He did not say anything about it as well. Forget it. I think I should not force him to answer. It must have been something important. He will tell me when he feels right. And with that, Sarah drifted off to sleep. Sean too fell asleep quickly as he was tired from all day's work. The next morning, Sarah woke up with a big smile on her face. Because as soon as she woke up, she saw Sean's face beside her. Sarah gazed at Sean as she traced her fingers on the soft skin of his face and murmured, You look so cute while sleeping, just like a little boy. I hope we will have a baby just like you. No way. I want us to have a little princess resembling her beautiful mom, responded Sean as he opened his eyes to look at Sarah. Sarah was startled to see him talk and surprisingly asked, w were you awake? Yes, I was. I was actually testing you to see what you say about me when you think I am sleeping. Winked Sean as he teased Sarah. Very funny, quipped Sarah in response, and just then she noticed the time on the clock and yelled, Oh my god, Sean, we are late. We need to hurry and reach the office. Come on, get up and get ready. Sean laughed as he calmed her down and replied, Chill, Sarah. It's Sunday today. We aren't late for anything. In fact, we can sleep all day if we want. And as for work, whatever is left, Victor and I can do it from home. Sarah chuckled at her own silly behavior as she widened her arms as she laid back on the bed and yawned. That's right, as you said, it's Sunday, so I can sleep all day if I want. And with that, she closed her eyes. Sean, however, immediately pulled her back up to sit on the bed and refused to let her sleep. No, no, I take back my words. We cannot sleep all day. You need to have breakfast on time so that both you and our baby stay healthy. And I don't want you to keep our baby hungry because of your laziness, okay? So get up and freshen up. Sarah grumbled as she stuck out her tongue at Sean and went to the bathroom to freshen up. Sean chuckled at her when his phone started ringing. It was a call from his lawyer. Seeing his name flash up on the phone, Sean immediately answered. Good morning, Mr. Graves. Why did you call so early in the morning? Is something wrong? Good morning, Mr. Rogers. I called to inform you that yesterday we had submitted all of the papers and documents required to the court. As you are already aware, our hearing at the court is tomorrow, and I want you to be very well prepared for it. You need to make a strong case so that the verdict will be in our favor. First of all, you need to tell them how you came to sign the deal with the company. We need to convince them so that even the other company will bear the losses and not just you. Sean was listening intently to every instruction that the lawyer was offering to him. He then asked, By the way, Mr. Graves, what about the land? After all, it is because of that one land that I am now in this predicament. Can't we put forward a request to investigate thoroughly about the land scam in the court? Yes, of course, Mr. Rogers. In fact, that itself is going to be our main argument in the court. If we succeed in convincing the judge about our case, then no one can stop us from winning this trial. Speaking of which, I need to ask you something, and please, you need to answer honestly, Mr. Rogers. Tell me, first of all, about the company which proposed the idea of this project to you. Were you ever aware of what kind of company it was? I mean, have you ever heard about such a company before, in the media, in your business circle, or from the papers? Anything. I had gone through an extensive research before finalizing my deal with the company, and as per my findings, the company was quite stable and capable, and it had even before signed and succeeded in a lot of path-breaking projects. And this project was crucial for both our companies, but then the land turned out to be the problem, answered Sean. And like that, the lawyer asked a few questions to Sean, who in return answered them truthfully. After a short while, Sarah came out of the shower and saw Sean talking to someone on the phone and he had a grim expression on his face. She feared whether a new problem had popped up, but before she could go to Sean and ask about it, he hung up the call and turned to see Sarah standing behind him. Sarah walked up to him and worriedly asked, What happened, Sean? 
Whose call was that? Is everything fine? Is something the matter? Chill, Sarah. Nothing is wrong. We are fine. Relax, replied Sean as he calmed Sarah down. If everything is fine, whom were you talking so seriously to on the phone? Questioned Sarah. It was Victor. I was talking to him over some work, and maybe that's why I looked serious. Laughed Sean as he responded. Sarah took a sigh of relief as she thought. Thank God that it is work-related, and no other issue has come up. After Sean got ready, both of them headed to the living room, where everyone was sitting and chatting. Sarah went and sat beside Grace, who looked at her and asked, What happened, Sarah? You woke up late today. Are you tired? Do you need to go to the hospital? If you want, then you should take Sean to the hospital for a checkup. Before Sarah could answer, Sean interjected, No need, Mom. I have already booked an appointment for the doctor. And the day after tomorrow, Sarah and I will go to the hospital for her checkup. Very good, Sean. You did great. It is necessary to take care of Sarah's health in such circumstances, praised Grandma as she replied. Just then, Katie walked up to Sarah and said, Sarah, you were sleeping during breakfast. That's why I didn't disturb you. I have reheated the food for you now. You can have your breakfast. Grandma agreed as she added, That's right, Sarah. You should eat properly. Maintaining a good diet is very much important. Yes, Grandma, replied Sarah with a smile. Meanwhile, Ivy, observing everything, thought, What is the deal with this Katie? I cannot seem to understand her play here. The way she is taking care of all of us, it doesn't seem like she has any ill intentions, but then... After the Ava incident, I cannot trust anyone so easily. Also, who is this girl? Where did she come from? We don't know anything. And now she is taking care of Sarah too? Let's see what her plans are in this house. Sarah finished eating her breakfast and was about to go back to her room when the doorbell rang. Who could that be? Let me go check, Grace muttered. However, Sarah stopped her as she said, Wait for a second, Mom. Let me open the door. Sarah opened the door and was surprised to see Adam and Lily standing in front of her. She was overjoyed as she hugged Adam and said, You guys, what a pleasant surprise! Adam smiled and hugged her back as he replied, I miss my little sis. It had been so many days since I last saw you that I thought, why not take advantage of this weekend and pay a visit to my lovely sister? Sarah laughed at his words when Lily cleared her throat and complained, so, all the love and hugs are only for your brother, huh? Did you forget about your best friend already? I dare not. First, come on in, replied Sarah as she welcomed both of them inside the house. As they reached the living room, Sarah hugged Lily and asked, How have you been doing, girl? I am doing good, yeah, responded Lily with a smile as she hugged Sarah back. Just then, Sarah, over Lily's shoulder, noticed a little boy standing behind her. He looked scared and he was tightly clutching onto the bottom of Lily's dress. Sarah looked at Lily as she gestured in the direction of the kid and asked, Lily, who is this kid here? Lily held the kid's hands and brought him forward as she introduced, This handsome lad here is Skylar. He is Adam's friend's son. His father met with an accident and he passed away on the spot. His father and his uncle both were in the car. Sarah fondly looked at the kid and asked Lily, What about his mom then? Lily took a deep breath and answered, She is in the hospital right now. She received a huge shock from the news of the accident and is right now admitted to the intensive care. When Adam found out about it, he rushed to the hospital to meet them. The cops were already there as it was a hit and run case. Skylar here too was at the hospital at the same time and he looked quite scared and frightened with everyone around him. That's why Adam brought him home, and I too enjoyed Skylar's company a lot. As she listened to Lily, Grace responded, Oh God, this poor boy, the things he is going through at such a tender age. Adam, you did great by bringing him over to your house. Or else it would have affected his mind a lot in such a difficult environment in the hospital. By the way, how old is our little Skylar here? He is four years old. The thing is, he is quite close to his mom. When I brought him over to our house, I thought he might ask us about his parents, but I think he took a fondness for Lily so much that he never once asked anything to us about his parents, answered Adam as he looked at Skylar with affection. Just then, Katie came out of her room towards them, and seeing her, Lily asked, Sarah, who's this? Sarah introduced Katie to both of them as she said, 
This is Katie, and Katie, this is my brother Adam, and my best friend and his wife, Lily. She then told them that Grandma had brought Katie along with her. Just then, Sean, who was talking on his phone in the living room, came out and was surprised and happy to see Adam and Lily in the house. He welcomed them as he greeted them. Hey guys, when did you arrive? Just a few minutes ago, replied Adam. Sean and everyone else sat in the living room to talk when Sarah said, Lily, come on, let's go to my room. We can talk there. Lily nodded her head and along with Skylar followed Sarah to her room. Skylar looked a little scared as it was a change in environment for him. He was comfortable around Adam and Lily, but not here. Sarah, as she looked at Skylar, understood that he was feeling a little antsy. Sarah sat on the bed as she called him over. Skylar, come on here. Don't be afraid. I have a lot of candies for you. Hearing candies come out of Sarah's mouth, Skylar's eyes sparkled like stars, but then he still did not move and looked up at Lily as if asking for permission. Lily smiled at him and nodded her head, a yes in response. Sarah took out candies from the drawer and offered them to Skylar as she asked, Skylar, if I give you these candies, then do you promise to be friends with me just like Aunt Lily here? Skylar smiled at her words as he nodded his head sweetly and kissed her on the cheeks as he replied, We are friends from today. Sarah chuckled at his response and then she sighed as she looked at Lily. I can understand his situation here. Looking at him, he reminds me of my childhood. I too, just like him, lost my parents in an accident when I was three, and I still remember crying in front of their lifeless bodies thinking that, at least this way, they would wake up and hold me in their arms to stop me from crying. But that did not happen, Sarah expressed. Sarah's eyes filled with tears as she spoke. Lily clasped her hand as she tried to console her. I know, Sarah, but look at you now. You have such a lovely family today. You have a husband like Sean who loves you more than anything else. Sarah, we all have that sad past, which we had to go through at some point in time. Be it you, me, or now Skylar, we all have to face trials in our life at least once. Anyway, you know what, Sarah? It has just been three days since Skylar has been staying with us, and in just three days, both he and I have gotten quite attached to each other. When Adam brought him to our house, I too, just like you, was surprised. But then when Adam told me what happened, I just then decided that no matter what happens, I won't let Skylar get hurt. After spending a lot of time, finally, it was time for Adam and Lily to go back home. Sarah stopped them as she requested. Stay back for dinner, guys. We all hung out after such a long time. At least have dinner with us before you leave. Maybe next time, Sarah, replied Adam, but Sarah insisted. No, next time, Adam. Come on, now. Let's eat together. I'm not going to let you leave without having dinner with us, okay? Adam had to give in to Sarah's insistence, and with that, all of them had their dinner together. After dinner, Adam and Lily were leaving along with Skylar when Sarah offered him an extra piece of candy as she said, There you go, buddy. This is special candy just for you. Skylar happily took the candy from her as he replied, Thank you, buddy. Hearing his sweet voice, everyone laughed together. After they left, all of them went back to their own rooms. Sean and Sarah, too, were in their room as they sat on the bed together. Sarah was in Sean's arms as she looked at him and asked, Did you hear about Skylar? Sean nodded his head as he replied, I did. I heard about him from Adam. You know what, babe? When Lily was telling me about Skylar, I remembered my childhood. Sarah sighed as she told Sean, Sean knew that Sarah would get sad thinking about her past, which is why he tried to divert her mind as he said, Sarah, why don't you go shopping tomorrow with Lily and Skylar? This way you will have a great time as well as both Lily and Skylar would also enjoy a day out too. That's a great idea, Sean, exclaimed Sarah. I should text Lily right now about this. Sean was smiling at Sarah as the reason behind him sending Sarah shopping was completely different. What is Sean hiding from Sarah? Why did he not want Sarah to go to the office tomorrow with him? Don't miss the next episode of Substitute Bride. Episode 157 Shopping Spree Sarah, as per Sean's suggestion, was about to text Lily when she suddenly remembered and looked at Sean and asked, Wait a minute, Sean. Tomorrow is Monday, isn't it? This means we need to go to work, so then why are you asking me to go shopping with Lily? 
Sean did not want to tell Sarah about the court case that he had filed, as he did not want her to take any sort of stress, especially because she was pregnant. He smiled at her and replied, You are thinking too much, Sarah. I just wanted you to go shopping to help you relax a bit. As it is tomorrow, I have back-to-back -back meetings at work, so I may not be able to spend much time or take care of your health. Also, you are not someone who takes care of your own health, am I right? As for the office, Victor and I can manage without you, so you can chill and go out shopping and have some fun tomorrow, babe. But Sean, I should come to the office for the meetings. As you said, there are important meetings tomorrow, and I think I should be there with you to help you in these meetings. As for shopping, I can do that later as well, you know, insisted Sarah. Sean got a little upset at this as he replied, Sarah, why don't you understand, babe? You know very well that these types of meetings can go on for a long time, and attending all of them will exhaust you. It isn't good for your health, Sarah. Seeing him get upset, Sarah sighed as she replied, Okay, okay, fine, I won't go to work tomorrow. There, are you happy now? Let me just text Lily. Also, this way I will get to spend some more time with Skylar. He is a very sweet kid, isn't he? As Sarah was texting, Sean thought to himself, Thank God, I got Sarah to agree to not go to work tomorrow. I'm sorry, babe, for lying to you, but then I cannot afford to cause you any stress in your condition right now. Now, tomorrow I can peacefully go and attend the trial. Also, I will be a little relaxed knowing that you are having fun shopping with Lily. Had you accompanied me to work, you would have had a lot of questions for me, which I would have not been able to answer. I just hope that tomorrow's hearing goes in our favor. Sean was so lost in his thoughts that he did not even realize that Sarah had been calling out to him for a while now. She waved her hand in front of his face as she pulled him back to reality and asked, Sean, hello? What are you thinking, babe? Uh, it's nothing. Did you text Lily about tomorrow? Inquired Sean. Yes, I did. Okay, now let's go to sleep because you need to wake up early to go to work tomorrow, replied Sarah, and just like that, both of them fell asleep in each other's embrace. The next morning, a soft, cold breeze was flowing, and the tinkling voice of the wind chimes hanging on the balcony woke Sarah up from her sleep. Sarah got up to sit on the bed as she gazed in the direction of the window. She saw that the rays of sun were shining directly on Sean's sleeping face, trying to break his sleep. Sarah grinned as she saw this, and she walked over to the window and started swinging the drapes to tease Sean a bit, due to which, Sean finally woke up and sat on the bed. As he slowly opened his still droopy eyes, he saw a smiling silhouette near the window. He rubbed his eyes to have a proper look, and that is when he saw Sarah standing near the window while smiling at him as she wished. Good morning, baby. Good morning, but why are you standing there, and what are you doing? Asked Sean groggily. Well, wasn't it you who had asked me to wake you up early today? So then, I am doing my duty, sir, teasingly replied Sarah. Okay, come on, wake up now, you need to go to work. And with that, she tugged on his duvet. Just then, Sean grabbed her hand and pulled her as she fell directly over him. Their lovely day began with both of them gazing into each other's eyes. Sarah placed one hand on Sean's cheek while she placed a tender kiss on his other cheek. As she sheepishly said, That is all for now, now get up and get dressed. And with that, Sarah stood back up on her feet as she pulled away from him. Sean pouted at this as he complained, Hey, that's not fair. We had just started. I cannot let you go before finishing it. And with that, he got up to hug Sarah and then made her sit on his lap as he wished again. Good morning, Mrs. Rogers. Sarah too wrapped her hands around his neck and touched his forehead with her lips as she embraced him. On receiving such warmth from her, Sean asked, That's quite a special morning. What did I do to deserve such love, huh? That is because you have an important day ahead today. All of your meetings are important, aren't they? Responded Sarah with a smile. Sean chuckled as he replied, Thank you, babe. And then he sealed his gratitude with a kiss. Okay now, get up. You need to reach work early today. Because there are a lot of meetings lined up today, you need to be prepared. Go and take a shower and today I will make breakfast for everyone. Hurry up, urged Sarah as she got up from the bed and went out of the room. But Sarah, what... However, Sean could not finish the rest as Sarah had already left, and Sean too got up to go and take a shower. Sarah walked into the kitchen, where she saw Katie already in the middle of preparing breakfast for everyone. 
Sarah walked up to her and said, Good morning, Katie. You can rest today. I will be making breakfast for everyone today. That's okay, Sarah. You can relax. I will do the cooking. Don't worry, replied Katie. But Sarah did not listen to her as she clearly stated that today she was the one who was going to prepare the breakfast for everyone. Katie gave in to Sarah's stubbornness as she replied, Okay, fine. You do it. But then at least can I assist you? Of course, Katie. Sarah laughed as she replied. Both of them were busy making breakfast. After some time, everyone came outside of their rooms and settled around the table when they saw Sarah and Katie setting up the table. Grace looked at Sarah and asked, Sarah, did you prepare breakfast today? Yes, Mom, I have made pancakes for breakfast today, for everyone, after a long time. Sarah nodded her head in response. But then aren't you going to work today? inquired Grace. Sarah was about to answer when Sean came up from behind and interjected. That is because I told her to take the day off. Grace looked at Sean with a puzzled expression on her face. The thing is, we have a lot of meetings to attend today because of which I will be very busy and would not be able to take care of Sarah as I would like to. Also, I don't want Sarah to undergo too much stress because of work. Victor and I can manage the work at the office and Sarah can relax today. Also, Sarah is going shopping today with Lily. I think it can help her unwind a little from all that has been going on. Sean explained. That's great, Sean. You did good asking Sarah to relax and take off, replied Grace. She then looked at Sarah and said, Sarah, have lots of fun today. Enjoy the day. Both of them smiled as they heard Mrs. Rogers. All of them had breakfast together, and Sean, after finishing his food, got up to leave. Sarah walked him out of the house to see him off. Before leaving, he looked at Sarah and said, So finally, after a long time, you are going out with Lily for shopping. Have lots of fun, okay? Also, as today I will be busy with meetings, I might not be able to take some time to call. But don't worry, I'll call you once I'm free, okay? I know, Sean. Chill and go now, smiled Sarah as she waved him goodbye. Sean walked to his car and opened the door, but stopped as suddenly as he thought of something. He then closed the door and traced his steps back to her. Sarah was confused to see Sean return as she asked, What's the matter? Did you forget something? Yes, I did, replied Sean as he pulled her into a kiss. They broke apart when Sean mentioned, I forgot my good luck kiss, babe. Sarah blushed as she replied, Such a charmer! Get going now! And with that, Sean drove off. Sarah was about to turn to go back home when she received a call from Lily. Sarah answered the call. Sarah, Skylar and I will be at your house by 11 and from there we can go out together. Also, we will check out the new mall that has recently opened. What say? Lily spoke excitedly. We can go wherever you want. Just come here first, chuckled Sarah, and with that, she disconnected the call. As Sarah walked back inside the house, she saw Ivy sitting with her mind in complete concentration, focusing on her work as she drew something on the papers. Sarah was curious to find out what she was up to, which is why she walked up to her and stood behind her quietly watching Ivy. Ivy was sketching out some designs for jewelry. Just then, Ivy sensed someone behind her and she turned to look and saw Sarah standing. Ivy chuckled as she asked, Hey Sarah, where did you come from and how long have you been standing there? Long enough to see you've been working hard on your designs, replied Sarah as she smiled at Ivy. By the way, can you show me what you've been working on? Ivy nodded as she handed over her designs to Sarah to have a look at them. Sarah, as she looked at the paper one after another, was amazed by her designs. Whoa, Ivy, these are beautiful. Did you design them on your own? All these pieces of jewelry are marvelous. You've got some skills, girl, she exclaimed. Ivy was grinning from ear to ear as she kept listening to Sarah praising her. Sarah then looked at Ivy and asked, Ivy, you are really talented, you know. Why don't you try exploring this? You are really great at it. No, Sarah, I was just scribbling here and there. Moreover, jewelry designing is not as easy as it seems to be. There was a time when I tried exploring it, but then I was rejected multiple times, saying that I am not experienced enough for the job, so that was a turndown, shrugged Ivy in response. The disappointment was quite evident on Ivy's face, even though she tried to brush it off. Sarah squeezed Ivy's shoulder as she encouraged her. Ivy, experience isn't everything in life, you know, and there is a first time for everything, right? 
I mean, just look at all of us, for example. Never did any of us experience what we are going through right now, but even then we are all still striving to go on and are protecting each other without losing confidence, so that we can retain what we have lost. You just need to be confident, Ivy. With determination, I know no one can stop you from achieving your goals. Ivy was grateful to Sarah for boosting up her courage and she looked at her as she replied, Thank you, Sarah, for believing in me and for encouraging me. Sarah then smiled at her. When her phone buzzed with a text, it was Lily who said that she was here to pick her up. Sarah smiled when she read the text and muttered, I better go and get ready fast, and with that, Sarah went to her room to get dressed. Meanwhile, Sean reached the state court and saw that his business litigation lawyer was already waiting for him. Sean parked his car and walked up to his lawyer as he asked, I hope I'm not late. No, Mr. Rogers, you aren't. In fact, you are right on time. The next hearing will be ours. Have you practiced what you have to say inside, just like how I coached you? Mr. Rogers, if you say exactly how we practiced, I am sure that the verdict will be in our favor, replied Mr. Graves encouragingly. Just then, Mr. Graves' assistant walked up to them and informed, It's time. Mr. Graves nodded his head and looked at Sean as he signaled him to walk in. Sean took a deep breath, squared his shoulders, and with full confidence, walked inside the court. Meanwhile, Lily and Skylar were waiting for Sarah outside her house in their car. Sarah walked out of the house and sat in the car as she looked at Skylar and offered him chocolate and greeted, Hey Skylar, here's another chocolate for you. Skylar smiled as he took the bar of chocolate from her. Thank you, buddy. Let's go shopping now, he replied. Seeing his excitement, both Lily and Sarah broke out into laughs. After a short drive, all three of them reached the mall, and on entering, Skylar excitedly ran inside the mall, while Lily ran behind him to grab hold of him. She finally caught him and held his hand as she looked at him and instructed, No running, Skylar. You might get hurt. Also, we are here to shop, so you can buy whatever you want, okay? Really? exclaimed Skylar, with his eyes wide open. Can I really buy anything? Can I buy lots of toys then? Lily smiled as she nodded her head and replied, Yes, you can buy whatever you like. Skylar jumped with joy as he hopped happily towards the toy store of the mall. Sarah and Lily followed him, where Skylar had selected a lot of toys for himself. And Lily happily bought it all for him. Sarah, too, was browsing through when her eyes fell on a cute pink-colored teddy, and she picked it up as she exclaimed, It's so cute and adorable! She then touched her belly and muttered, Why don't I buy this for my baby? This teddy is so cute that if I don't buy it now, then I will surely regret it after reaching home. Sarah turned around and saw that both Lily and Skylar were busy with their own shopping, which is why she decided to go and buy it herself. Just then, Lily turned around but could not see Sarah anywhere. She looked here and there but still could not find her. Lily was panicking when someone placed a hand on her shoulder. Lily immediately turned and was relieved to see Sarah standing behind her. She looked at her and asked, Where were you, Sarah? You scared me. Sarah replied, I was just... That's when Lily noticed Sarah holding a cute teddy in her hand and she immediately understood where Sarah was. Okay, now I know where you were, Lily remarked. The three of them came out of the toy store, which is when they noticed a store for apparel for newborn babies. The store had everything for newborns, including clothes and toys, nursery cribs, bathing products, and everything that was essential. Both Sarah and Lily looked at each other as they shared the same thought, and both of them, with a smile, walked into the store. They were happy to see the small clothes for the babies and they excitedly selected one after the other when suddenly they both realized something and Lily looked at Sarah as she laughingly stated, But Sarah, right now we don't even know the gender of our babies yet, do we? I mean, Adam and I have decided to keep it a surprise for us. What about you? So did we. We too wanted to find out only after our baby arrives, laughingly replied Sarah. But that's okay, we can buy clothes for both boys and girls. Problem solved, am I right? Just then, Lily looked around her for Skylar, but he wasn't there with them. She looked here and there for him, but could not find him. Lily was petrified as she fearfully asked, Sarah, where is Skylar? He is not here with us. 
Don't worry, Lily, he must be here somewhere. Come on, we can look for him, assured Sarah as she calmed Lily down. They asked the people around them, but nobody had seen Skylar. Lily's heart was in her mouth as she looked for him, while Sarah too was about to break into tears. However, she composed herself and calmed Lily as she said, Lily, you need to relax. So much stress is not good for you. Here, sit down. I will bring some water for you. After that, we can talk to the security in the mall, okay? I am sure we will find him. Sarah was about to leave when someone from behind Lily tugged on her dress and in a sweet voice asked, What happened? Why are you crying? It was Skylar, and seeing him, Lily immediately picked him up and hugged him tightly as if she had finally released the breath that she had been holding in all of this time. Sarah too was happy to see both of them, as in just a few days, they had grown closer to each other. Sarah walked towards them and looked at Skylar as she said, Don't ever go anywhere alone again, okay? Did you see how scared we were? Promise me that you won't do this again. Promise replied Skylar, which brought smiles to their faces. They then had food together, and then Lily dropped Sarah back home. Sarah pressed the bell on the door and was surprised to see Sean open the door for her. What are you doing here? Didn't you have meetings to attend today? Surprisingly asked Sarah. I was done with them early and came running back to see my beautiful wife. And looking at you, it seems like you have done quite a lot of shopping, huh? Teased Sean. Of course, let me show you what I got replied Sarah. Sean nodded his head as he took her hand and walked inside their room. Meanwhile, Lily and Skylar reached the Miller house. Skylar, go to your room and change and then come downstairs, okay? I will get you some honey cookies and milk. Okay, replied Skylar and went to his room. Lily headed to the kitchen to get cookies for Skylar when her phone started ringing. Lily answered the call without looking at the phone and said, Hello? Lily's eyes widened as she listened to what the person on the other end of the call was saying to her, and she furiously responded, What the hell? Don't ever try to contact me again! Episode 158 Seeds of Doubt Lily had instructed Skylar to go back to his room to freshen up as she headed out to the kitchen to get some cookies for him. While she took out the cookies and poured the milk in a glass, she muttered to herself, I hope Skylar likes it. By the way, where is he? I should go check and see what's taking him so long. Just then, her phone started ringing. Lily answered the call without looking at the phone and said, Hello? However, there was no response. She again continued to speak. Hello? Who is this? There was still no response. Lily removed the phone from her ears, thinking it could be a wrong number. She was about to disconnect the call when a woman's voice spoke up. Wait a minute. Don't hang up yet. First, listen to what I have to say before you disconnect the call. Who are you? Questionably asked Lily. The woman laughed at her question and replied, You can think of me as your well-wisher. Lily was baffled with her response as she annoyingly questioned, Who the hell are you and why did you call me? Who I am is not important, but yes, why did I call is very much important. I have called you to warn you ahead of the storm that is going to completely destroy your life, replied the woman ominously. Lily was starting to lose her cool as she raised her voice and demanded, Stop messing with me and just cut to the chase. Tell me who you are and what do you want? The child with whom you are so happily shopping around the mall is going to be the reason behind your destruction, the woman stated bodingly. Lily's temper spiked as soon as she heard this and she growled. Just shut the hell up! The woman laughed uproariously as she responded. The angrier you get, the more you will regret in the future, and the reason behind this would be your husband and that kid. You love your husband a lot, right? Then why don't you ask him as to why he has kept you in the dark all this while? Anger heated her blood as Lily furiously bellowed. What the hell? Cut the crap, go spew this nonsense somewhere else, and don't you ever try to contact me again, do you understand? And with that, she disconnected the call. Lily stood in her place as she thought about the woman and mumbled to herself. Who was she, and what was she jabbering on about? More importantly, how did she find out about the fact that Skylar and I went shopping today? What truth is Adam hiding from me? No, no, Adam loves me, and he has never hidden anything from me. And as for Skylar, he is such a sweet boy, how can he destroy my life? 
I think that it was one crazy woman talking nonsense, that's all. Lily was trying to brush the thoughts away, but somewhere inside her, she was a little bothered by what the woman had told her. As Lily was lost in these thoughts, Skylar appeared and held Lily's hands as he said, I am back, and I changed into my comfy clothes as well. Lily smiled at him as she bent down to meet him at eye level, and ruffled his hair as she said, Well, don't you look handsome. Lily then led him to the table and helped him sit on the chair as she placed a plate full of cookies in front of him along with a glass of chocolate milk. There you go, sweetie. I've got these cookies especially for you. Taste them and see if you like them, she asked. Okay, excitedly replied Skylar. However, Lily's thoughts again went back to what the woman had said and she wondered, who was that woman and what was she saying about Skylar? How can this pure little innocent boy destroy me? He is the sweetest little person I know. I am sure that she was a crazy lady. Lily, you need to ignore what she said. Her words mean nothing. Meanwhile, Sarah and Sean were in their room, where Sarah was showing Sean the little dresses that she had bought for their baby. Sean looked at them lovingly when he asked, But Sarah, why did you buy clothes for both girl and boy? Sean, didn't we decide that we were not going to find out the gender of the baby? So I thought that, in that case, I should be prepared for whoever graces us with their presence, be it a boy or a girl," replied Sarah smilingly. Sean laughed at her response as he said, Wow, Sarah, sometimes you tend to be a genius, you know. By the way, I wanted to talk about something important with you. Sure, what is it? asked Sarah as she folded the clothes. As I said yesterday, I have scheduled an appointment with the doctor tomorrow, so tomorrow in the morning we need to go to the hospital, okay? informed Sean. Sarah, as soon as she heard this, jolted up from the bed and nervously asked, What? To the hospital? But why? What do you mean, why, Sarah? You're pregnant, right? So of course we need to go to the hospital. You need your checkups, right? Amusingly replied Sean. Sarah shook her head sideways instantly. But, but then, going to the hospital means getting injected every now and then, stuttered Sarah in response. Sean laughed at Sarah's reaction as he laughingly replied, I did not know that you had a fear of needles, but don't worry, they won't be pricking you with anything, it's just the usual maternity checkup. Sarah took a sigh of relief and muttered, Thank God, in that case I am in. Let's go for a checkup tomorrow in the morning. Sean chuckled at her and Sarah was about to go take a shower when she stopped and turned to look at Sean and inquired, By the way, you did not tell me about your meetings, how did they go? Sean was taken aback to see Sarah suddenly asking him this question, and he did not reply as he fell silent. Seeing him not respond, Sarah worriedly asked, What happened, Sean? Is something wrong? Sean then smiled at her as he replied, No, nothing is wrong. The meetings went great. You should hurry up and take a shower. After that, lay down a bit. You should get some rest after shopping all day, you know. I have to make a call right now. I will be back in a minute, okay? Sarah went to take a shower while Sean went outside to call up his lawyer. Mr. Graves, now what do we do next? He asked over the call. Mr. Rogers, our next trial is next week. We need to wait until then, replied Mr. Graves. How long will I have to wait? Finally, after such a long wait, did we get a date for our trial, and now there isn't much hope about it as well. I am worried, Mr. Graves. I don't want my family to be punished for someone else's sins concernedly expressed Sean. His lawyer did understand Sean's worries, however, they had no other way. Have some patience, Mr. Rogers. I know things are looking a little bleak right now, but I promise that soon the verdict will be in our favor. He explained. After talking to his lawyer for a while, Sean went back to his room so as to not to arouse any suspicions from Sarah. Meanwhile, in the Miller house, Lily was expectantly waiting for Adam to come back home from work. It was eight in the night, and that is when the doorbell rang. Lily rushed to open the door and saw a smiling Adam standing in front of her. He, with a wink, asked, Missed me, babe? Lily leaped into his arms as she wrapped her hands around his neck and hugged him tightly. Adam was surprised to receive this sudden hug from her, but he smiled and hugged her back. Lily was feeling safe in Adam's embrace when the woman's words kept bothering her mind. I don't give a tinker's damn about anyone else. All I know is that both Adam and I love each other very much, and I know that Adam would never be hiding anything from me. I don't care about the world as long as I have Adam by my side, she thought. 
Tears fell from her eyes without even realizing, and Adam lifted her head to look at Lily and worriedly asked, Why are you crying, sweetheart? Is something wrong? Lily smiled at Adam as she wiped away her tears and replied, No, nothing. I think I just missed you so much that tears fell from my eyes. Oh, is that what it is? Thank God, I was worried that something was up, replied Adam as he let out his breath. Lily laughed as she responded, <laughs> Scaredy cat. Okay now, come on in and freshen up. I will heat dinner for you. Adam went to the room to freshen up while Lily was setting the table. Just then, her phone buzzed with a text message from an unknown number. She opened it to read, Don't trust your man so much, because when that trust breaks, you might end up completely broken. As she read the text, Lily knew that it was from the same woman who had called her earlier. Don't you ever text me or call me again. If you do, then I'm going to report you to the cops. Lily texted back. She then blocked the number and thought to herself, Who exactly is this woman and why is she bothering me? I cannot let her get into my head. Anyway, where is Adam? What's taking him so long? I should go call him. Lily headed to their room to call Adam. She opened the door to their room when she heard Adam talking to someone on the call. Are you out of your mind? I can never tell Lily the truth. Lily was right outside the door with it ajar as she heard Adam speak. Her heart was thumping nervously. She placed a hand over her heart as she mumbled. Was what that woman was saying really true? Is Adam really hiding something from me? No, no, Lily, I trust my love. Please, Adam, prove my fear wrong. Please, God, let my thoughts be wrong. You are not hiding anything huge from me, Adam, right? Just then, she saw Adam disconnecting the call and coming outside of the room. Lily immediately rushed downstairs. She stood near the dinner table and wiped her tears away. Soon, Adam appeared and walked towards her and said, Sorry, babe, I had an important call. That's why I got a little late. No issues, Adam, as long as you're here. Come on, have a seat now. Lily faked a smile as she replied. Adam sat at the dinner table and had his dinner with Lily. As they were having dinner, Lily thought, Should I ask him or not? If it boils down to trust, then there is no harm in asking him, right? Lily then looked at him and purposely cleared her throat as she asked, Ahem. Ahem. Adam, can I ask you something? Uh-huh. Adam simply responded. Uh, is there something bothering you? Is there something you haven't told me? I mean, if there is anything troubling you, you know you can talk to me, right? Hesitatingly mentioned Lily. Adam, who was busy enjoying his food until now, hearing Lily's question, suddenly stopped eating and fell silent. He then looked at Lily and smiled. No, Lily, everything is absolutely fine. There is nothing troubling me. But why are you suddenly asking me this? Uh, no reason. Just thought of checking if all is good or not. Lily replied as she made up an excuse. After dinner, both Adam and Lily were heading back to their room when Skylar came out of his room and walked up to Lily. He rubbed his eyes as he held Lily's fingers and requested, I cannot fall asleep. Can you tuck me in, please? Lily smiled at him as she replied, of course, sweetie. She then turned to look at Adam and said, You can go to our room. I'll come after putting him to bed. Adam nodded and went to his room, while Lily went with Skylar to his room. Adam was sitting on the bed when his phone buzzed with a text message. After a while, Lily returned to their room and saw that Adam was still on his phone, doing something. Lily went and sat beside him as she placed a hand on his shoulder and asked, What are you doing not sleeping yet? Just then, Adam's phone started ringing with a call, and as soon as Adam saw the name on his phone, he brushed Lily's hand away from his body and got up to leave as he replied, This is urgent. I will be back soon. And with that, he left the room. Just shut up. I know that my wife trusts me, and she knows that I will never break her trust. Adam answered the call. Lily was eavesdropping on Adam's call from a distance, and she realized that something was definitely up. Tears could not stop falling from her eyes as she thought to herself. I for sure know that something is most definitely going on with Adam. I think that I should talk about this with Sarah first. She can help me as to how to deal with this problem now. The next morning, the doctor's appointment was scheduled at 10 a.m. It was 9 in the morning and Sarah was still sleeping. Sean came out of the shower and he had just a towel wrapped around his waist. He saw that Sarah was still sleeping. He sighed as he mumbled, Look at her. We have to go to the doctor for her checkup and she still has not woken up. He went to her and started waking her up as he said, Come on, babe. It's nine already. We have to be at the doctor's at ten. 
Sarah, however, was not going to wake up from her beauty sleep. Sean tried to wake her up several times, but failed to do so. Sarah kept sleeping like a log. That's when something sparked in Sean's mind. Because Sean had just come out of the shower, his hair was still wet. He bent down and shook his head near Sarah's face and tiny droplets of water sprinkled on her face from Sean's hair. Sarah instantly woke up from her sleep as she groggily grumbled. Who wakes someone up like this? You could have woken me up like a normal person, you know. I tried, you know, but then I realized that you aren't normal, which is why I had to get a little creative to wake you up, and see, it worked, laughed Sean as he replied. Sarah, as she listened to him, made a face and pouted when Sean chuckled and gave her a small peck on her lips as he said, Rise and shine, sunshine. Get up and get ready. We are going to be late for our appointment at the doctor's office. Sarah smiled at him and then got up and went to take a shower, got dressed and came out of the room. As she came out of the room, Sean looked at her and said, Sarah, we will have our breakfast, after which we will go to the hospital for our appointment. Sarah nodded as she asked, By the way, don't you have to work, Sean? I do. I will go to the office after your checkup. Don't worry, replied Sean, and both of them sat to have their breakfast. After breakfast, Sean and Sarah went to the hospital for Sarah's routine checkup. Meanwhile, in the Miller house, Lily had seen Adam off to work, and then she went to Skylar's room to wake him up. Good morning, sweetie. Wakey, wakey, she wished. Skylar opened his eyes slowly as he saw Lily and smiled. Good morning to you, too. Lily kissed Skylar on his forehead as she smilingly said, Go and brush your teeth and freshen up. I have your breakfast ready downstairs. And with that, Lily exited Skylar's room. Just then, Lily's phone buzzed with a text message. Lily looked at her phone and saw that someone had sent her a video clip. A video? What is this? I should check it at once, she muttered to herself. She downloaded the video on her phone, after which she pressed play. For the next few seconds, Lily was watching the video when her eyes popped out from her sockets in shock and her phone slipped to crash on the floor from her trembling hands. Lily's knees gave way and she fell on the ground as a river of tears made down her cheeks with her sobbing uncontrollably. What exactly was in the video that shook Lily to the core? Episode 159, A Shocking Revelation After watching the video, Lily collapsed in a stupor. Without even realizing it, her chin trembled as tears made their way onto her cheeks. She was in a haze as she could not believe that Adam could do something like this to her. Tears were flowing continuously from her eyes as she clutched her dress. As she placed her hand on her heart and mumbled to herself, no, this is not possible. Adam cannot do such a thing. Someone is trying to mess with me. This video is not real. All of this is a lie. Just then, her phone again buzzed with a notification of a text message. As soon as she heard the buzz, Lily was terrified of opening the text. She dreaded what she might find out next if she checks the message now. However, Lily composed herself and with a sharp intake of breath, built up the courage to read the text. The text was from the same number which had sent Lily the video. The message read, If you still cannot believe it after seeing the video, then I am sorry I cannot help you any further. But the truth is, in fact, that your husband is cheating on you. He has betrayed your trust. He already had a kid before the wedding. After reading the text, Lily opened the video and started watching it again. In the video, Adam was going to the hospital to meet Skylar's mom. She was clutching Adam's hands in the video and was requesting, Please, Adam, I need you. You promised me that in case something happens to me, you will take responsibility for our child. I know that you have your own family now and that you and your wife are going to have a kid soon. So I cannot expect much from you, but Skylar will have no one if not for me. So even if you cannot accept him as your own son, just look after him as a guardian. So that after I am not here anymore, he would not have to spend his life in foster care. And with that, she bawled into tears. Adam hugged her as he tried to console her and replied, Don't worry. If Skylar is my son, then I will take complete responsibility for him. He will never have to struggle in life. I will take good care of him, and right now he is happy in my house. Lily was a complete wreck as she saw the video several times. She just could not believe her eyes. Tears could not stop flowing from her eyes. 
Lily forwarded the video to Adam as she wanted to hear an explanation from him about the video. She wanted to know what was going on and wanted to find out why Adam had kept such a huge secret from her. Meanwhile, Adam was in his office buried under a pile of work when his phone buzzed with a text from Lily. He checked his phone to see that Lily had sent him a video clip. Adam assumed that the video must be of Skylar and his shenanigans recorded by Lily to show him. With these thoughts in his mind, Adam played the video. However, as soon as Adam watched it, he was stunned to his core. He was petrified on seeing it, so much that his phone fell out of his quivering hands. However, Adam quickly picked up his phone and agitatedly dialed Lily's number. As soon as Lily answered the call, he spoke. Lily, it is not what you think. I can explain. I will come home right now and... However, before he could utter the next word, Lily hung up on him without even responding. Adam kept talking on the phone. Hello? Hello? Lily, are you there? He smashed the phone down in frustration as he realized that Lily had disconnected the call. And in the next minute, he rushed to go back home as he feared that Lily would misunderstand him. Meanwhile, Sean and Sarah were returning home after Sarah's checkup when Sarah noticed something while looking out of the car's window. She immediately asked Sean to stop the car as she said, Sean, stop, stop, stop the car right now. Sean stopped the car as he worriedly looked at Sarah and asked, What's the matter, Sarah? Why did you suddenly ask me to stop the car? Sarah smiled as she looked at Sean and then pointed outside the car at something. Looking in the direction of where she was pointing, Sean smiled as he replied, Oh, sounds good. Let's go then. Both of them got out of the car and walked into a painting store where a lot of paintings of cute little babies were on display. Sarah looked a lot excited and seeing her excitement, Sean couldn't help but smile as well. Sarah was busy looking at all of the paintings of small and adorable babies when Sean walked up to her and asked, so, Mrs. Rogers, did you like any of the paintings here? I love each and every one of them. It's very hard for me to choose the best from among them. Sarah took a deep breath before replying. Let me help you then. I will select one and you can select one. This way we can both help each other in selecting the best one out of the lot. What say? Suggested Sean as he smiled at her. Sarah nodded her head and both of them linked their hands with each other and walked further inside the store to check out some more paintings. As they walked around looking at the paintings one after the other, both of them laid their eyes on the same painting. They both pointed towards the same painting at the same time, and seeing this, they both looked at each other and started laughing. It was a painting of a baby boy in which he was cutely sitting with his hands folded and smiling. His smile was adorable, and he was donning a blue-colored cap. Looking at the painting, Sarah smiled at Sean and mentioned, Sean, I like this painting. Me too, replied Sean as he beamed at her, and hearing his response, Sarah laughed as she added, Of course you do, as they say. Like minds think alike. Bingo, we do think alike, and both of us have great tastes, you know. Sean laughed as he replied, just then, Sarah's phone started ringing with a call. It was from Ivy. Sarah answered the call as she said, Hello? Hey Sarah, I called because Mom was asking whether you went to the office to work with Sean, inquired Ivy. Sarah laughed as she replied, No, I did not. Tell Mom not to worry and that I am returning home with Sean soon, okay? And with that, she disconnected the call. After disconnecting the call, Ivy was going back to her room when she heard a muffled voice coming from the kitchen. Ivy slowly walked in the direction of the voice and saw that Katie was talking to someone on the phone. Katie whispered on the call, Hello? Yes, everything is going fine here right now. Sean and Sarah seem to be doing everything in their power to try and win their mansion back. Sean often comes home quite late at night from work. However, it looks like things are still not working out for them yet. Ivy was overhearing Katie's conversation as she thought to herself, Who is this Katie talking to? Why is she talking about our family with someone else? Why does it sound like she's keeping tabs on us and reporting to someone about it? My gut was right when I felt that something was off about this woman. But I did not expect to see her be so clever and sly. If I confront her now, then I am certain she will come up with some sort of excuse, so I think it is better if I keep her under my radar for a while. I will talk to Sarah about her once she returns home. I think I need to think of something to properly deal with Katie. God knows what is cooking inside of her head right now. Meanwhile, in the Miller house, Adam rushed home to see that Lily was in her room, sitting on the bed, sagged against the wall. 
She had a dark expression on her face and her eyes were red and puffy. Looking at Lily's wrought state, Adam walked towards her, each step shaking and careful. As he reached her, he was about to hold her face when Lily rasped, Don't touch me! Adam was taken back by Lily's words. Lily stood up from the bed and with a darting gaze looked at Adam and sobbed. How could you, Adam? How could you do this to me? Do you so easily fall out of love with me? Did I ever demand anything from you? I thought that we were both happy together. Then why did you strangle our love to death? Adam glanced away as he kept listening to her without even being able to make eye contact with her, as he had nothing to say for himself. Seeing him quiet, anger rose inside of Lily as she roared, Say something, damn it! What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Adam Miller? Adam held her by the shoulders as he tried to explain, Lily, it is not what you think it is. In fact, as a matter of fact, I myself... But before he could continue, Lily interrupted as she angrily demanded, I myself what, Adam? What were you going to do? That's what you said over the call, and that's what you are saying here again. She then shoved the phone with the video on it to Adam's face as she growled. After watching what is in this video, are you still going to say that what I am thinking is not right? Why, Adam? Do I look stupid to you? I mean, do you think that I am that gullible? The woman here in this video is Skylar's mom, isn't she? And she herself is saying that Skylar is your kid. Then why did you lie to me about his father being your friend, Adam? Tell me. Lily, please calm down for a minute. You cannot take any sort of stress in your condition. Please calm down, Lily, requested Adam worriedly. Lily was scowling at Adam when Adam filled a glass of water and offered it to her as he explained. I found out that Skylar is my son for the first time in the hospital itself. What? What do you mean? Tell me clearly, demanded Lily in surprise. Adam then in a frail voice explained himself. Nora and I were friends in college. We used to hang out together with a bunch of other friends during college, but then after we graduated, we gradually lost touch with each other and we all moved on in life. Lily kept quietly listening to Adam. He then continued, Four years ago, that is before you reappeared in my life, all our friends got together and we were deciding to plan a reunion from college, to go back and reminisce about our good old college days. At that time, I had taken over our business completely. One day I received a call from my friend and he invited me to our college reunion party. That night we all gathered together. After a long time at a friend's house together, Nora was there too. That night we all drank a lot. All of us were drunk as hell as we partied that day, and maybe when we were high, Nora and I spent the night together. I am not sure what happened that night as the next day, I woke up with a mean hangover with no recollection whatsoever of the activities of the previous night. After that day, we all returned to our lives and so did Nora and me. As he said this, Adam walked up to Lily and clasped her hands and continued, after that day, I never again met her, nor did I ever talk to her, but just a few days ago I received a call from someone asking me to hurry over to the hospital urgently. When I went to the hospital, that's when I found out that it was Nora who had called me and that she was suffering from a brain tumor, and it was before she went in for her surgery did she tell me that Skylar was my child and she requested me to take care of him. I was stunned to hear this news. I could not believe or say anything to her and I just waited for her to recover from her surgery to talk about it with her. As I waited for her surgery to get over, I noticed Skylar sitting in the waiting room, looking all shrunken and frightened. Looking at his timid face, I could not bring myself to let him be at the hospital and that's why I brought him over to our house, but trust me, Lily, when I say that I never cheated on you. However, Lily was not in the right state of mind to understand him. She grabbed Adam by his collar and barked. I don't believe you, Adam Miller. To be honest, today I see no difference between you and my father. My father, too, broke my mother's trust just like this. The end of a relationship starts with a lie, Adam. That's what happened to my mom when one day my father brought another woman and a kid to our house. Do you remember that when you proposed to me I had asked something from you? I asked you to promise me that you won't ever betray me as my father did to my mom, but that's exactly what you did. You broke both my trust and your promise. Today, you brought Skylar with you. I don't have any problems with that child as I know that it is not his fault, but I know that soon you will abandon me just like my mother was abandoned. But don't worry, I am not a fool like my mom. I won't wait around for you to throw me out of your life. I will save you the effort and leave this house and get out of your life for good. 
Adam felt a cold wind through him as he listened to Lily. He shockingly exclaimed, What? No, I won't let you leave me, Lily. Lily furiously stormed out of the room and was about to go down the stairs when she stopped and turned around to look at Adam and uttered, I think we don't have anything more left to hear or say to each other anymore. Goodbye, Adam. With that, she turned to leave when Adam ran behind her and tried to stop her by grabbing her hand. However, Lily wasn't in the mood to stop as rage spread through her and she angrily shrugged his hand off of her. That is when her leg twisted and she was falling backward. Adam tried to catch hold of her hand, and as he tried to reach her, their hands missed each other by inches and Lily fell down the stairs. As she rolled down the stairs, her head hit the edge of the stair and blood started flowing from it. As she began losing her consciousness, Lily did not care for herself but clutched her belly tight. As the only words that slipped out of her mouth were, My child! And with that, darkness took over as she was knocked unconscious. Seeing this, Adam was caught like a deer in the headlights as he at the top of his voice cried, Lily! He rushed down the stairs and held Lily's head on his lap as his eyes flooded with tears and he whimpered with rasping breaths. Lily, Lily, please wake up, Lily. Open your eyes. Nothing will happen to you. Please, Lily, wake up. Meanwhile, on the other side, Sean and Sarah reached home and Ivy opened the door for them and welcomed them in. As they walked inside, they saw that everyone was sitting in the living room. Grace looked at Sarah and asked, How was your checkup? What did the doctor say? Just then, Vincent interjected, Honey, at least let them sit first. Hearing this, everyone laughed. They sat on the couch and Sarah replied, The doctor said everything is good, Mom. Both baby and I are healthy. He also instructed her to maintain a healthy diet and strictly not eat unhealthily. Street food that she loves oh so much, Sean added. You could have edited that part out, you know, complained Sarah as she gave Sean a side eye and everyone laughed. Just then, Sarah's phone started ringing with Adam's call. Sarah checked her phone when Sean asked, What happened? Who is it? It's Adam, replied Sarah. As she was going back to her room, Sarah answered the call, but before she could say anything, Adam in a shaky and trembling voice spoke. Sarah, Lily is in the hospital. She fell from the stairs and is gravely injured. What? screamed Sarah in horror as her feet froze in her spot. The phone slipped from her grasp and fell to the ground, and tears formed in her eyes. Episode 160 Dashed Hopes What? screamed Sarah in horror as her feet froze in her spot. The phone slipped from her grasp and fell to the ground and tears formed in her eyes. Seeing Sarah's reaction, everyone got scared. Sean rushed to her side as he held her steady and worriedly asked, What's the matter, Sarah? What happened? However, Sarah was unable to speak as if a log was stuck in her throat, preventing her from even making a sound. Even after asking multiple times, Sarah did not reply, and that is when Sean picked up her phone from the floor and decided to talk to Adam himself and find out what was going on. But as soon as he picked up the phone, Sarah, with a quivering chin, stuttered, L Lily, hospital. Lily, Lily is in the hospital, Sean. W we need to leave right now. And with that, Sarah dashed out of the house in a daze, and Sean followed her and instructed Ivy. Take care of everyone here. I'll reach and call you. Ivy nodded, and Sean left with Sarah to the hospital. On their way to the hospital, Sean was trying his best to pacify Sarah, but she was in a constant state of panic. Sean feared that all of this stress might adversely affect their child's health. They reached the hospital and Sarah hurriedly came out of her car and ran to the receptionist's desk as she frantically asked, Lily, where is my Lily? The receptionist could not comprehend Sarah's incoherent words when Sean appeared behind her and asked, Lily Miller, may we know where she is admitted? We are her family. One sec, ah uh, yes, Mrs. Lily Miller, she has just been taken to the operating theater informed the receptionist after checking her database. Hearing the receptionist mention the operating theater, Sarah's heart sank and Sean composed her as he held her by the shoulders and carefully led her to the operating theater. As they reached, they saw Adam sitting in the waiting room with a hunched back and his hands covering his face as he sobbed convulsively, waiting for Lily. Sarah, as soon as she saw Adam, screamed his name. Adam! 
and ran to him as she hugged him and wailed in his arms. After a few seconds, she wiped her tears and looked at Adam and consoled. Don't worry, Adam. Nothing will happen to our Lily. She will be just fine. But how did this all happen? Adam did not know how to respond to her question. He, in a weak voice, answered. She fell down the stairs. He told Sarah only half the truth as he feared that after finding out everything, Sarah too might hate him. He was ashamed of his mistake, a mistake which he did not even remember committing. He did not remember what happened between him and Nora that night and whether Skylar really was his kid. Sean and Sarah were consoling Adam. Seeing Adam's wretched state, Sarah had composed herself to provide him comfort. After some time, the doctor came out of the operating room. Seeing him, all three of them rushed to him and Adam timorously asked, Doctor, how was Lily? The doctor let out a sharp and defeated exhale as he disappointingly informed. The patient is fine, Mr. Miller, but I am sorry we could not save the baby. The doctor's words stabbed Adam's heart as he lost all his strength and wobbled on his feet and was about to fall to the ground. When Sean immediately caught him and held him steady, the doctor then added, I must tell you that even though the patient is physically fine, she is not mentally and emotionally stable right now. She needs your love and care more than ever right now, especially from you, Mr. Miller. She has suffered a huge loss, which is why you all need to make sure that she doesn't undergo any distress. Right now, even the smallest thing can prove fatal to her mind. Please keep this in mind. And yes, in a while, she will be shifted back to the room. You can all meet her then. And with that, the doctor left. Adam was a train wreck upon finding out that he had lost his child. Sean and Sarah were trying their best to console him, but they too were distraught with the news. After some time, the nurse informed them that Lily had been shifted and that they could meet her now. Sarah asked Adam to go to Lily, but Adam refused as he said with tears in his eyes, I cannot see Lily, Sarah. How can I face her now? I can't. You go, please. Take care of her, Sarah. But Adam... However, Sean stopped Sarah from saying anything further and asked her to go to Lily. Adam could not forgive himself. As Sarah entered the room, she saw that Lily was slowly opening her eyes. Lily was not yet aware of her loss, and she was just thinking about Adam. Seeing her silent, Sarah stroked her hair, as she did not know what to say to Lily. Sarah did not know how to tell her that her baby for whom she was so desperately wanting and waiting to meet was no more. Sarah for a while just kept staring at Lily as she kept stroking her hair. After a few minutes of total silence, Sarah finally asked, Lily, how are you feeling now? Are you in pain? I can handle a headache, Sarah, but what I cannot deal with is when my heart aches, replied Lily in a weak voice. Sarah was shocked to hear Lily as she thought that Lily did not know about her miscarriage yet. But when she heard Lily speak, Sarah wondered whether Lily knew about it or not. Everything will be okay, Lily. Just get well soon and I promise that in the future your life with Adam will be filled with happiness. Comforted Sarah in response. Lily, with tears in her eyes, winced. There will be no happiness, Sarah. Everything is finished. Adam made sure of it and now we can't do anything about it. Sarah was confused with what Lily was saying. She wanted to tell Lily that it wasn't Adam's fault, but what she heard next knocked her sideways. Lily told her. Skylar is Adam and his friend Nora's son. What? How is this possible? You must be mistaken, Lily. Adam won't ever do something like this, exclaimed Sarah in disbelief. Adam himself confessed, Sarah, that Skylar is his son and Nora, too, is in the hospital, admitted for brain tumor, sniffled Lily in pain. Lily then clutched Sarah's hands as she continued. Sarah, I have no problems with Skylar. It is not his fault or anything. However, I cannot accept Adam and his dishonesty as well. I just cannot bring myself to forgive Adam for lying to me about all of this. He could have just told me the truth instead of hiding it. But now it feels like he betrayed me. How do I convince myself now? How do I forgive Adam? And after finding out this truth, I don't think that I can stay in the house with Adam anymore. I just cannot live with him, Sarah. Sarah was in a state of shock as it took a while for her to absorb this piece of news. She collected herself and then tried to calm Lily down as she responded. 
Lily, I don't know who this Nora is, and I don't know who lied to whom or who is at fault here. But what I am confident about is that Adam loves you more than his life. And don't you talk about leaving the house. That is your house too, Lily. I will talk to Adam, but you cannot make any decisions in haste. Just please trust me once, Lily. However, Adam had already heard about Lily's decision about leaving the house as he was standing at the door to Lily's room, and now Sean too was aware of everything as Adam had confided in him about everything outside the room. Sean placed a hand on his shoulder as he said, Hang in there, man. I know that you have made a mistake by lying to Lily, but give her some time, as I am sure that she will surely understand you once she cools down. Adam had received some confidence from Sean's words, but Sarah and Lily's conversation had broken his spirits. Adam was hurt to hear that Lily did not even want to live with him anymore. Just then, he heard Lily saying, Okay, Sarah, I will stay in that house as you say, but only until I give birth to my child. And yes, Sarah, can you please live with me for a few days? Of course I can stay with you for as long as you want. Sarah replied as she tried to keep a brave face in front of Lily, but it was heart-wrenching for her, as she thought that when Lily finds out the truth about her miscarriage, she will be devastated. She stopped her tears from falling as she did not want Lily to find out the truth just yet. Adam and Sean, who were standing at the door, too, understood this. Adam was relieved, thinking that at least now, Lily was not going to leave the house. He thought this way, he had some time to make up to her, and stop her from leaving. He had already lost his child, and now he did not want to lose his love as well. Sean and Sarah spent the entire day in the hospital with Adam and Lily. The Rogers family visited Lily in the hospital, but they too did not say anything about her miscarriage to her, as Sarah had already instructed them not to do so. The next day, Lily was going to be discharged, and Sean had gone to work. Adam completed all of the discharge formalities and came back to her room, where he saw that Lily was getting up from the bed with Sarah's support. Adam, can you please sit here with Lily? I need to call Sean, requested Sarah. Adam nodded his head and Sarah left. He then walked towards Lily, who turned her face away from him. Adam, too, wanted to give her some time as he had wronged her, and it was natural for him to bear the consequences. On one hand, the room was filled with silence, while on the other hand, Sarah ran up to the receptionist's desk to inquire about Nora. She wanted to find out which room number she was admitted to. The receptionist informed Sarah about the room where Nora was in. Sarah was about to enter Nora's room when a nurse stopped her and questioned, "'Excuse me, where are you going?' I need to meet the patient, replied Sarah in a rush. I am sorry, but who are you and how do you know the patient? The nurse questioned. I am Nora's friend and I am here to visit her, answered Sarah, as she thought of an excuse and with that, she was about to enter, when... But the patient is not in the room, the nurse informed her from behind. Sarah stopped as she heard this and turned around to ask. But when I asked the reception, they told me that she was in this room. We've just moved the patient to ICU. We have informed the family as well. You can see her later after the condition improves, the nurse stated. And with that, she left while Sarah stood thinking. I am sure there is some kind of misunderstanding here. Adam said he doesn't remember anything and also there was no word from this woman. For over four years, then doesn't that mean that nothing happened? I need to find out more about this. Anyway, I should return to Lily now. And with that, Sarah went back to Lily's room. After some time, Adam, Lily, and Sarah returned to the Miller's house. Adam had already moved all of Lily's belongings to Sarah's room, as he knew that Lily was not going to share the room with him anymore. Sarah carefully supported and led Lily to her room and helped her lay on the bed. Due to the miscarriage, Lily's body had gotten weak and she was tired, which is why she took some medicines and went to sleep. Meanwhile, Skylar found out about Lily's return, and he happily ran to her room to greet her when Adam stopped him and picked him up in his arms and went back to his room as he said, Skylar, you cannot meet Aunt Lily for a while. Why? Why can't I meet her? I was waiting for her. Why won't you let me meet her? You are bad. I don't want to talk to you, complained Skylar as he pouted and got down from his lap, walked to the window, and looked away from Adam with his arms folded. Yes, you are right, Skylar. I am bad. No, in fact, I am the absolute worst, thought Adam in his mind as he blamed himself for everything. Just then, Sarah entered the room and squeezed Adam's shoulders as she said, 
Everything will be fine, Adam. Adam gestured towards Skylar, who was standing at the window with a frown. Sarah looked at him and assured. Don't worry, I can take care of him. You should go and rest a little. You must be tired, too. Adam thanked Sarah and then left. Sarah then walked up to Skylar and held his hand and helped him sit on the bed. She then offered him a piece of chocolate as she said, Your Aunt Lily has specially asked me to give you this chocolate on her behalf. Skylar's eyes sparkled as he heard this and asked, Really? Did she really ask you to give me this chocolate? Of course. She also told me to tell you not to get upset and that she is a little sick right now and will meet you as soon as she gets better. Until then, you have to be a good boy, okay? Sarah replied as she cheered him up. Okay, I will be a good boy so that she gets better and so that I can meet her, responded Skylar happily and his anger faded away. Sarah had handled the situation somehow. However, she feared how Lily would react if she saw Skylar. Seeing him might hurt her. All Sarah could do right now was try to stop Skylar from meeting Lily, at least for the time being. Sarah had instructed all the helpers around the house to make sure that both Lily and Skylar do not come face to face with each other. After instructing everyone, Sarah went back to Lily. After running all day in the hospital yesterday, Sarah too was tired, and she too slept away. For the next two days, Sarah did not allow Skylar and Lily to meet each other. She kept making excuses about Lily's bad health to keep Skylar from meeting Lily. Sean too was busy with his court case and work, but he still made time to drop by and meet Sarah at least once a day. Lily's health too improved over time. Adam was constantly trying to talk to Lily, however, she did not even look at his face. Sarah had made up her mind that today at any cost she was going to meet Nora in the hospital, but before that she had to drop by her house as Grandma had summoned her. Sarah thought about bringing Skylar along with her, but that is when she realized that with him around, Nora might not be able to talk to her freely. That's why before leaving, Sarah instructed one of the helpers. Until I return, you must stay close with Skylar and please don't let him out of his room. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I will stay with him and I will not let him out of this room," obliged the helper in response, and with that, Sarah left the house. After she left, the helper stuck close to Skylar in his room. After some time, she got a call on her phone. She answered the call and chatted on the phone for a while, but then when she noticed that Skylar was busy with his drawings, she walked towards the window to continue talking on the phone. The helper was so busy talking on the phone that she forgot to keep an eye on Skylar in the room. After a few minutes, Skylar got bored with his drawing and looked at the helper who was still busy talking on the phone. He got down from his bed and walked out of the room without the helper noticing. Meanwhile, Lily was in Sarah's room. She was standing at the balcony, lost in her own thoughts. Lily had her phone in hand and she was looking at her pictures with Adam, one after the other, with a pining sigh. Just then, she was startled by a noise of something, crashing outside her room, and in this scare, her phone fell from her hand out into the garden. She came out of the room and walked downstairs to exit the house to go to the garden and collect her phone. Just as she opened the door to go out of the house, a cheerful voice came up from behind. There you are! 